Good evening, Sister Mary Louisa. May the Lord bless you. Sister, my question is in Genesis chapter 1. I would like to go to verse 26 of that same chapter. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Sister, I have a doubt of this verse or a question. The Lord is speaking in a plural sense within his three manifestations. I would like, sister, for you to clarify what are the functions of each one of them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, if you could clarify. All right. Well, the roles are almost the same. The work that God does is one. Only that the Lord here wanted to teach us or speak to us of his son, to speak to us of a king. And the role of a son, he works in that manner, or even as the Father and Holy Spirit. God is the same, because in many other parts of the Bible, it says that God, being one, does all things. And so we, it, well, it's a mystery for human beings to try and understand the way in which God works. But he, what he teaches us, or what he revealed here to his prophets, to his servants, to people, he wants us to believe, though we don't understand very well. He only says, believe. Don't question. Don't ask. Simply believe. And so we must respect that. And so it's a mystery. But it says God is the Father. He is God. He is Spirit. And the Son, that the Word was before the creation, was the Word, is what the Word of God says. And that Word, the Word of God one day, made Himself a human being. Because, well, God can do it all. And He made Himself a human being and began to work in as that human being. And would teach people that they needed to believe in Him because He was the only path towards salvation or the only one to intercede and mediate for man to be saved. Jesus Christ, he was the mediator between God and man. And so he taught us that we simply need to believe these things. And we don't understand more because God hasn't given us more capacity to understand his deity and what he is, but only a little bit. And the little that we have or know is what we should love and believe and continue forward with. And maybe perhaps people or the world who are unbelieving and some religions that oppose themselves and say, well, you are believing in three gods. But we, or the little that we understand, and from the memory that God has given us or the intelligence God has given us to understand, we comprehend that God is powerful and he works in different ways or he has different roles, however he wants to work. That God works as the Father and he is God. That God works as the Son and is the Son of God. That God works as the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is him. That is the only thing that he has allowed us to understand and that we should believe that. And we know that he is a mighty God, only that his manifestation is as he wanted in this way, because it said that he wanted to live among men, among human beings for some time. And it is that great mystery. This is why it is called God's mystery, a mystery that has mm, science and people, those who are atheists and unbelieving, those who are skeptic. He has them suffering because as they want to find an origin to everything, an origin and a why and, and, and a reason for everything, which that is something we will never understand here. We will understand it when we are with God, all of those great mysteries. But for now, he wants us to simply believe. And he said, only believe and don't ask or question. Only believe because this is what God has made us to do, to believe and what we don't see or know or understand. That's it. And so... This is why we say Lord, or we say Lord to him, or we call him Father, or we call him God in our language. 
But we know that there is a supreme being that is supernatural that is ruling over us. And with the power that this supernatural being has, he works however he wants. And he has given us this book. And speaking of which, someone asked, who wrote the Bible? Someone said, well, who wrote the Bible? Who, who wrote all of these books? And so the Bible, which are many books, the prophets, the Psalms, so the prophets, for example, Ezekiel, who wrote Ezekiel? Well, Ezekiel, the prophet, as he received the revelation from God, he had his scribe and he would speak to him what God revealed and the scribe would write. Moses, too, he wrote those first five books and God to Moses, he revealed Genesis and the creation of man and all of these things God revealed to him and he ordered him to write. And so each person wrote their book, not the person themselves, but their scribe. For in that time, people didn't know how to read or write, but there were some specialists in reading and writing and they were those in charge of writing. And so each book or the person is the author inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the beautiful thing is that this book, everything that is in here, it speaks of promises. Here in this book, it says that people would speak in tongues, another language they wouldn't understand. That there would be miracles and healings. And that you would pray to God and God would do many extraordinary things. And that there would be spiritual gifts, there would be visions and dreams. It says so here in this book, the Bible. And we today see that this is fulfilled in our lives, these scriptures. This is why a person who asked me who wrote the Bible because they asked me who wrote it. And what if it's all a lie? Well, it's not a lie because we see that a superior being is manifesting himself. A supernatural being is manifesting in our lives, giving us peace, joy, happiness. And if someone is ill, they were healed with a prayer or with a laying on of hands. And we speak in tongues. Someone sees visions. Someone has dreams. God speaks to them. And all of that is written here in this book. And so why would people then say it is a book of lies if we are living and experiencing everything that is written here in this book? And so it means that this book is true, that this book is inspired by God. It was written by human beings, inspired or taken over by the spirit of God, because if it were not so, then we would not be living any of the things that are written here. So this is when we realize that the book is from God. And so I am answering this question for the person who actually was questioning this uh, concerning who wrote the Bible and what people wrote these things. And so that is God, a mystery. God is a mystery because there are so many things about him that we don't know. But it is not a mystery that he does give us joy and happiness and we speak in tongues and we see visions and there's prophecy and God speaks to the depth of our heart without the other human being knowing who that person is. They speak to them and, and they cry and he manifests in different ways. This we do know that this being exists and that this being has taught us through this book, that he manifests himself as such, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they are one. That's it. Epic.